So obviously, as you can see here, it's got these little branches which are given off, um, these gastric branches which are given off to both surfaces of the stomach, and it's also got amental branches which descend to supply the greater omentum. So I've just switched back to this diagram with the stomach in its normal orientation. So you've got the splenic artery here, and it's got this long, tortuous course, and it enters the hilum of the spleen, and it gives off, it gives off the um, the little short gastric arteries to the fundus of the stomach, and it also gives off this um, the left gastroepiploic artery. So obviously this runs behind the stomach, but I'm just drawing on for to illustrate. Um, and remember, you've got the little pancreatic branches here given off to the neck, body, and tail of the pancreas. So you can see the left gastroepiploic artery running across here and the gastric branches supplying both surfaces of the stomach. And you've got these, these vessels here which descend and supply the greater omentum. So if you remember in my peritoneal tutorial, the greater omentum hangs down in front of the small intestine. So something worth mentioning is that I've been referring to this um, artery as the gastroepiploic, but you might see it referred to as the gastroamental artery. So worth bearing that in mind. So now we're coming on to the final branch of the celiac trunk. So this is the common hepatic artery. And you can see it here, as it comes off the celiac trunk, it turns right. And you've got two, it has two terminal branches. So it gives off the proper hepatic artery, which goes to the liver, which I'm showing you here. And it's got the gastroduodenal artery, which descends to supply the duodenum and the head of the pancreas. So it also gives off a branch which supplies the surface of the stomach. And we've seen this branch before. It's the right gastroepiploic artery. So it's called the gastroduodenal artery because it gives off a branch to the stomach, the gastro part, and it, gi it gives off a branch which supplies the duodenum, so the duodenal part. So it's the gastroduodenal artery. So if you've been listening carefully to this tutorial, you'll know what this branch is here. So this is the right um, right gastric artery, which anastomoses with the left gastric artery. So the origin of the right gastric artery is variable, so it can come off the common hepatic artery, or it can come off the proper hepatic artery. But what you need to know is that it comes off and it runs along the, the lesser curvature of the stomach and anastomoses with the left gastric artery. So the common hepatic splits into the proper hepatic and the gastroduodenal artery. So let's follow the proper hepatic artery to the liver. So you can see here there's two clear divisions and there's no prizes for guessing what these two are. So the one on the left is the left hepatic artery and the one on the right is the right hepatic artery. So this division occurs just before it enters the porta hepatis. So you can also see this little vessel given off, um, and this comes off the right hepatic artery, and it's called the cystic artery, and it supplies the gallbladder. So you can see the gallbladder, it's a little sac here. So finally, we've got to take a look at this other branch of the common hepatic artery, the gastroduodenal artery. So there's no, there's no duodenum in this picture, so I'm going to flick over to the other diagram I showed you. So we're looking at this descending branch here, the gastroduodenal artery. So before the gastroduodenal artery descends, it sometimes gives off a branch called the supraduodenal artery, which supplies the top part of the duodenum. So we've got the pylorus here of the stomach, and we've got the duodenum with its C-shape sitting around the head of the pancreas. So the first branch we'll look at is this one coming off here, and you can see it curves around the greater curvature of the stomach. So hopefully you will know what this is, because we saw the other one before coming off the left of the splenic artery, and that was the left gastroepiploic artery. So this branch coming off the gastroduodenal artery is the right gastroepiploic artery, and it anastomoses with the left gastroepiploic artery. 
So after the next branch of the gastroduodenal artery is the superior pancreatico duodenal artery. So it's quite a mouthful, but it is very descriptive of what the artery does and where it's located. So it's superior because there's also an inferior one. Um, and it's called pancreatico duodenal because it supplies the head of the pancreas and also the duodenum. So there is an inferior pancreatico duodenal artery which comes off the superior mesenteric artery. So like we've seen all these anastomosing vessels, we've seen the left gastric anastomosing with the right gastric on the lesser curvature of the stomach. We've seen the left gastroepiploic and the right gastroepiploic anastomosing on the greater curvature of the stomach. And now we're, we're seeing an anastomosis between the superior pancreatico duodenal artery and the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery. So the superior pancreatico duodenal artery comes off the gastroduodenal artery and it supplies the duodenum and the head of the pancreas and it, it, it anastomoses with the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery which comes off the super, superior mesenteric artery. So just to further confuse things, the superior pancreatico duodenal artery and its inferior counterpart have anterior and posterior branches. So it's not shown in this diagram, but I'm going to draw it on to illustrate it for you. So we're looking at, here we've got the anterior superior pancreatico duodenal artery, because it, it lies anterior to the, uh, to the head of the pancreas. But there's also the, the superior pancreatico duodenal artery also gives off a posterior branch, which runs behind the pancreas. And then it joins up again with the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery. So just to recap things, you've got the celiac trunk, then you've got the common hepatic artery which gives off the proper hepatic artery which sends off branches to the liver and the gallbladder, and then you've got the gastroduodenal artery which sends off branches to supply the head of the pancreas and the duodenum as well as this branch supplies the um, surface of the stomach and anastomoses with a branch from the splenic artery. So the gastroduodenal artery gives off the right gastroepiploic artery and then it gives off the superior pancreatico duodenal artery. And the superior pancreatico duodenal artery gives off branches anteriorly and posteriorly. And these branches unite inferiorly to form the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery which is given off by the superior mesenteric artery. So that's the branches of the celiac trunk, and I really hope that's cleared things up.